Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. This is your host, the Bard, keep bringing you podcast 23 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. And today I am joined once again by Raptor. How are you doing, Raptor? I'm doing quite excellent, Barkeep. How are you today? Oh, doing pretty good, uh, especially since this morning, because uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, a little bit of uh, Sentai news and how that affects us. And specifically, for those of you who don't know, uh, DukeMon22 over at Ranger Board has given us the first Sentai rumors for the 38th Sentai uh, for next season. Yes, yes. So, um, you just want to read it off? Or? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read from his Ranger Board post here, and then uh, we're going to give you our impressions about this, and then we'll go on from there. Um, basically, what the rumor is, and let's also point out that none of this is official, none Just of this may, rumor, it yeah. may not be real and all that kind of stuff, but speculation is fun. It's a lot more fun speculating about the Sentai, I think, than usually uh, speculating about Power Rangers, especially since with Sentai, you have... It's no, completely original. You, you have no idea what's coming. Yeah. So, um, and I'm just going to paraphrase a couple of things he has here. If you want to see the full thing, definitely go to rangerboard.com. And we'll you, you put can a read link it. to it. In yeah, the, we'll, we'll get a link in there. Um, but basically, it's de- it uh, starts off with the idea that the toy sales for Key Ranger are really good. And so what they want to do is they want to return to uh, animal mechas of some sort. And specifically, what uh, DukeMon22 notes in his post is animal-faced vehicles. And he draws a comparison to Go Onger. So, vehicles that look like animals, um, maybe they don't transform. Animal themed vehicles. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. And then he also. However, he points out with the animal faced vehicles yeah. that it's not just Go Onger that used that. Yeah. It, uh, he points out that uh, Go Busters did it. Mm hmm. Such as the rabbit faced helicopter. Yeah. Ghost Ranger, Live Man, Jet Man, those are all the examples down there. But that's the main point here is that uh, the grub- it, it, we're looking at animals next season, which is great. I love animals. Uh, now, it also mentions that the this is more something a little bit more specific that the lion will not be an animal up for consideration uh, in this new line, which I think is interesting. We'll get into that in a second. And that a Yellow Ranger will return next season. As a female. So, again, animals for next season. Um, female, Yellow Ranger, and no lion. That's all the information we have, but I think that's something we can go off on. Yes, and, certainly. Um, what, what do you think about this, just th- this information in general? What, what do you think about it? Well, again, like you said, it's uh, some scattered details Hard to put together any idea for a plot from this. Yeah. But, you know, animal-faced vehicles have been pretty cool. We've had some pretty interesting designs for animal-faced mechas and just straight-up animal mechas, you know, such as Gower Ranger slash Wild Force. Mm-hmm. Those were some of the cooler, maybe if not the individual mechas that made up the bigger ones, but the bigger ones, they were some of the cooler designs in recent memory. Yeah, I always like animals for a lot of reasons. I mean, I, I like the, the Bulkager Zords, I like the Gokai Zords and all that. But anytime you can incorporate an animal into it in some way, I think is just um, unique. Because it's something specific to Earth in general. Because you got those space theme series and, and all that. It's like, what's cool about Lost Galaxy is that like you have the lion, the gorilla, the air quotes, condor, Um, and you're going to other worlds, and that's like a representation of your planet, of your society, and the whole thing about animals goes... Especially if you consider the rumor that the Galactabees were from the Animarium, so that... Yeah. But that's... Yeah, but I just like the idea that mankind's history has had animal worship and animal beliefs going way back to whenever and just the whole idea of incorporating animals into sentai it is just awesome to me um now with that they said there's gonna be no lion you know what's your thought on not having a lion um i always appreciate when they do something different Mm -hmm. lions are about as overused as the t-rexes yeah. In the dinosaur theme Sentai's. And Ghost Sager slash Megaforce 
mixed it up by having a lion, except the lion didn't belong to the Red Ranger. Oh, no, I think that's a tiger. It's supposed to be a tiger. Really? I thought it was a lion. Well, who knows what Megaforce is calling it, then go say it's a tiger. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> regardless, it was a big cat that didn't belong to the Red Ranger. And, you know, I don't care if they use a lion or not. It doesn't really bother me. I do like seeing different animals out there. And see, that was something that I appreciated about Geki Ranger and mm -hmm. Go Busters. Both of those Sentais had big cats mm -hmm. as their mechas, but there was no lion in Geki Ranger. Well, there was with Rio and Jared's character, but that was later down was the not line. A yeah. was not a ranger. Yeah, exactly. He was the, the bad guy and all that. Yes, and then with Go Busters, we had Cheetah. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the most awe-inspiring animal, but, you know, a cool mix-up. And then there was a rabbit, for crying out loud. Did you ever think you'd see a rabbit in Power Rangers? No. Or no, Sentai? <laughs> I'm really interested to see if they're going to keep it as a rabbit when it's turned into Power Rangers. And it'll probably be a hare or something like that, whatever. Um, but, but yeah, I just want to see more unique animals out there. Somebody also on Bring Your Board pointed out one that I thought was pretty cool. Let's see an owl return. Let's see, you know, like from, from Jetman, let's see an owl. That would be cool. Um, and the last thing, female Yellow Ranger coming back. What are your thoughts? Um, well, really, that's... Nothing to be exactly surprised by mm -hmm. because considering how many series we've had in recent years yeah. with a female yellow, so really it just seems like they're going back to formula, maybe as a response to the controversy of Kyo Ryuger. Yeah. Maybe it's just because they want to go back to what's familiar after they've had their year of experimentation. And I don't care if it's male or female, to be honest. The fact that it's a yellow ranger. I just like the idea of the, again, like I said. Of the in three our, colors that are in everything. Yeah, and, and like we said in the last video, I like the color scheme that's red, blue, yellow, green, and pink. So, and actually, per, I would actually like to see another female white ranger now that I think about it. So, um, and we're, let's get into that because there isn't much to go off on here. But what Raptor and I were really talking about discussing with this podcast is what we want to see in a Sentai series. Now, um, there have been a, a lot of things that have come through. We have pirates, we have samurai, we have ninjas, we have dinosaurs, we have rescue workers, time traveling, all these different tropes and stuff. Yes, yes. Um, and, you know, it seems likely that the next one's going to be something a little bit different. I don't think it's going to be a rehash because the reason I think they did dinosaurs in Kiryuja is they knew it was safe. Um, yes, they were playing it safe after a bit of a disappointing year with Go Busters. Yes, um, and I think what they're going to do is they might not take as big a chance with, with what they did at Go Buster, but they're probably going to go do things like Five Man Formula, Six Ranger, depending on how successful the Ten Ranger Formula is uh, with the Inviki Ryuger, with 25 episodes kind of left to go. We might get more than just six. I doubt there'll be a three-man team, because again, that goes back to Go Buster. Um, and I also imagine things like collectibles are going to return uh, in, in probably big fashion this time. Um, but what we want to go ahead and discuss here is really what we as fans want to see in a Sentai. Um, now, and, before we yeah. go any further, I want to bring up something that I saw on the website tvtropes.org. Yes, this is a good point, so yeah. Yes, me. and I haven't been able to find the link. I was trying to find it again before <laughs> we started this podcast today, but basically a user on TV Tropes posited that ever since Gal Ranger, there's a a five-year formula has developed with Sentai. Which is an interesting uh, kind of formula here, and uh, it does seem to work uh, in general, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. Raptor, why don't you just tell us what that fit formula is here, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail. Okay, so the formula begins with an anniversary series, a series that celebrates Sentai tropes, plays to a lot of things that have been done in the past, celebrates them. So it starts with Gal Ranger. Then after that, there's always the something different Sentai, usually with a three-man team. Mm -hmm. So, following the anniversary series, Gal Ranger, Baokinger, and Gokaiger, we have three-man team in Hurricaneger. We have three-man team in Geki Ranger. Three-person team in Go Busters. Usually those try to do something a little different with mm -hmm. the formula. And then after that, we always have the light-hearted Sentai. Yes. So we have Auburn Ranger with its focus on, you know, big explosions and hot blood. And then the comedic 
Go Andre. Mm-hmm. Which focused on comedy, wacky villains, wacky adventures. And then we have Kyo Ryuji, which is just focused on high energy, colorful mechas, all that. Yeah. And then, after that, we have the dark Sentai. Mm-hmm. And so, after that, there was... Uh, Shinke- uh, well, Shinkanger was definitely the dark one. Mm-hmm. And then... Um... Oh, geez, it's hard to remember when we don't actually write this stuff down. Yeah. It's, it's... <laughs> um, so we had Gallery yeah, Ranger. Decker Ranger. Decker Deca- Deca- Ranger. Decker Ranger, yeah. Yeah, which was which was serious. And then we had Shin Kanger, which is serious. We haven't gotten to what's next in... Which, if the formula follows, then it seems like it would go ahead and be some sort of serious Sentai. But I would kind of doubt that a little bit simply because where we're going of the response to Kyoryuji. Yeah, cuz it's it, you know, Kyoryuji is a very light-hearted series. It's got its dark moments, but they're few and far between. Yeah, and merchandise-wise, it's been a great success. Exactly. But Which then anyways, I'm still trying to, to get hold of most of it. <laughs> to, to finish the formula off, after the dark sentai, we have the mystical sentai. So, Magi Ranger at the end of that cycle. Mm-hmm. And then we have Ghost Sager mm-hmm. at the end of the Balkinger cycle. Yeah, so, which means the 39th Sentai logically is going to go ahead and be some sort of magic based series, which frankly I wish we were getting that a little bit earlier, but then again, we'll go ahead and talk about that. Um, now, I think they, they may follow to formula, but again, just with how bad Go Buster was received uh, overall. Not that it was that bad of a series, but it got away from what was so familiar in all the other it's series. Its toy sales and ratings were disappointing, so therefore it was regarded as a bit of a failure. But you have to admit, Go, uh, Go Kiger really set the bar so high. Yeah, it's... That anything would have been a disappointment after that. And that's probably why they did what they did, is because they wanted to go ahead and well, try something new. Well, Ranger Ranger probably had the same problem following Balkinger, which was pretty popular. And what they did is they focused on character a lot of theirs. But we're getting off topic right yes. here because, uh, I mean, it's just so much fun to talk about. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to present the five-year formula just as something to think about when looking forward to speculate on the next Sentai. Yeah, and what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to talk about not so much what we think is going to happen in the next Sentai, but what we as Sentai fans would like Like to go ahead and see. Yes, because, you know, know, the thing is, Raptor and I have a lot of different opinions on different things, as you can tell from the last top list we've been doing here recently, uh, that we, we have different tastes. And I'm really curious as to know what he would like to see in a Sentai and see how that matches with me. So, you know, Rapid, I'm going to give you the floor here for a minute. And simply what I want to go ahead and hear is, you know, what kind of team dynamic, male, female ratio, number of rangers, what type of motif would you have, uh, color scheme, uh, are there collectible toys out in here, you know? Okay, um, okay. Uh, stuff like that. Just if you were in creative control of Super Sentai and you got to decide who would be, you know, what would be the 38 Sentai What is it you would want to go ahead and see as a fan of that series? Okay, so I'm just going to go off the assumption that yes, it's an animal series, just as a jumping off point. Okay. But that's just saying animal mechas. You know, the rumor didn't say animal themed series, just said animal mechas. Yes. So, first of all, you know, you you mentioned collectible toys and whatnot, and collectible toys usually ties into the mechas. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to mechas... Something that Kyo Ryuji has done that I've enjoyed is it's really big on alternate forms for the mechas. Mm-hmm. You know, you have... Because at the start, the main mecha would only have three of the core fives yes. mechas. So, you know, you have Kyo Ryuzen, normal, mm-hmm. which has Dri Sera and Stegochi as its weapons. Okay, and yeah. So it has a drill, and what's Stegochi's weapon? It's like a sword, and can be a shield. It's multi-purpose. Yes, and then you can switch those out for Kyoryu's in Western. Which is the most awesome, yeah. and a sword. Yes. A and highwayman. Then, yes. And then there's also the rocket form when you... And then kung fu form. Yes. Uh, I mean, they, they, it's not so much alternate forms, it's just like, it's a... Uh, like Wild Force was, Gal Ranger, different arms make different yes, combinations. And I like those sorts of things 
because it provides variety. Yes. Even though they usually use the same ones over and over again for the first five episodes they're introduced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and something that... Gokadger had this to an extent with the alternate forms. So mm-hmm. the problem was they would just focus on one for a few episodes and they'd get a new yeah, one. Yeah, they would do the, that over and They'd use the Magic Dragon, but as soon as they got the Pat Striker, they stopped using Magic Dragon. And then they got the... And they got the Shin Kanger power, used that for a while, and it's... Yeah, it just kind of continues. I would that like way. to see if they do this alternate mecha thing, if they constantly switch back and forth depending on the situation. You know, if there's a monster that one form is better against, they'll use that. But say the next episode, that previous mecha formation isn't as good against the monster they're fighting, so they have to switch to a different one. I like that, because... Not just from the perspective of seeing something unique, gain variety, but also from the, the story perspective. Because mm-hmm. it forces the rangers to be strategic. I see what you're saying, because, you know, Rector and I have been talking a lot about Pokemon with X and Y coming out and strategy involved with that. It seems to me that what your suggestion is, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of like... Um, I'm a wire type and you're a fire type, but then I need to switch my Megazord to a ground type to better combat you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. When we put it in four terms of Pokemon, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> and again, alternate weapons are cool. And so, and to go into that, I would like to see bigger weapons or unique weapons on the Rangers. That's been one of my big problems with Kyo Ryuzer. Those I weapons see. are tiny. Yeah, more more like iconic kind of weaponry because the problem we get with a lot of shows like like you look at Time Time Ranger, everybody, everybody's special weapon is just a big gun or variation on the exact same weapon. Basically. Although I would argue that Go Busters had, even though they all had the same weapon, it was a cool weapon, and the sword yeah. wasn't tiny. It was. A pretty good sized sword. And yeah. The blasters looked cool, and they were good sized blasters. So maybe it was something more along the lines of like Zoo Ranger weapons, maybe. Yes, you know. I like big weapons. As you point out with the Fire Smasher. Yeah, you know, they don't all have to be that big. But so more more along the lines of, like, say, Shinkanger. Looks, yeah, so it looks like something that would be useful in a fight. Okay. Like, Kyoryu Blue's little shield, that thing doesn't look like it'd be useful in a fight. <laughs> not, not, not at all. And Gokaiger, I think, did that well. Those were weapons big enough to be used in a fight. Yeah. So... Yeah, there's that. Now, as for team dynamics. Okay. I like to have characters with strongly defined personalities, personalities that can clash as well as complement each other. Okay. So basically what we're looking at is something more of a character story than what we're getting with right now, Key Ranger, which they have character, but there's it's not a, a lot of... It's a mecha story. Yeah, it, it's... The thing about Key Ranger, no matter how much I like it, it's more about the visuals than it is about the characters. Now, you can debate that all day, but I think that's kind of where they're going, whereas mm-hmm. Go Buster was more about the uh, character stories than and it I was the mecha. I would argue that Go Kaiger, despite its focus on mecha in the past century, was a lot about story. It had very strong characters, and there were many episodes dedicated to the relationship just the relationships between and surprisingly characters. it was a really good balance uh, that they had you know like the episode that focuses on don and guy's relationship that yes. was a story of jealousy and learning to overcome that yeah and then there was the episode that focused on the relationship between luca and i am and how they have a very sisterly relationship and now our current focus in key ranger is the pink ranger and the violet ranger fighting over for the affection of the red ranger so (laughs) yeah way to overcome the sexism there yes but so yeah i understand what you're saying about about dynamic and all that and see i think the big thing is they can't come they have to they have to clash but also complement each other Mm -hmm. i think that's great character dynamic because think about when you're just hanging out with friends you have friends that you you were very different from Mm -hmm. but you all so you you can also learn to have your personalities back each other up well. So, you know, I used this example a few weeks ago, but I'm going to harken back to this again just because it's one of the best written shows, well, kids shows on television. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to My Little Pony here. <laughs> okay. I'm going, bro- I'm going to out myself as a brony again. The personalities of the characters on the show, they will argue 
pretty often. Mm -hmm. But they make up for each other's strengths. So, for example, in one episode, the main six ponies have to go drive off a dragon that's polluting the sky because it churns out smoke when it sleeps. Okay. Each of the six ponies has a different method to trying to try get the dragon to leave. And they argue with each other about how to accomplish that. And it turns out in the end, it's the character Fluttershy that has the right approach when throughout the entire episode, she had seemed like she didn't belong on this trip to go drive off the dragon. Mm -hmm. And the point is, they argue with each other, but they compliment to each other. And I think that's a great dynamic from Ranger teams. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. And I'll probably go into a little bit more detail once I go ahead and talk about mine. But we're here to go ahead and talk yes. about yours. Um, any other ideas that, that you have? I mean, things that you just want to go ahead and see? Or is that yes, kind of in yes. general what, what you well, like? Well, there's, there's a few more things. Okay. In regards to the Sixth Ranger, because mm -hmm. that's, an, that's an assumption at this point. You know, they sometimes change it up. Such as two yeah, six only, rangers. Yeah, we only know if there are three rangers or five rangers or however they're going to start this. But as for the, the Johnny-come-lately contrast to the rest of the group ranger, mm -hmm. I like the anti-hero six rangers. So, like, um, like you mean like a Abar Abar killer, Abari Killer, Abari Killer, Dragon yeah. Ranger, and Tommy to Ta a lesser extent. Time Fire. Time Fire, Titanium Ranger. I love the ones who... Again, contrast the group. The ones who will do things a little differently just because maybe they came from the wrong side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. They have different ideas about how to do it. Those are my favorite six rangers. We've had plenty of before, and we've had plenty of six rangers that worked well with the team. Mm -hmm. That's just my favorite. And also, one more thing. Well, two more things. I guess. Okay, go ahead. I like having a rival villain. Like what they did in Boat Cager, if each ranger had a specific rival to go ahead and fight. Yes, and like Bosco and Go Kaiger, yeah. he was he had a much more personal connection to the team than the Zangiak did. Mm -hmm. Or Inter and the Go Busters. He engaged them directly a lot more than Messiah did. Or to go back to Jetman, Gray. Yeah. He had a personal vendetta against the Black Ranger. And the two had a final duel together on their own. Yeah, it, it's always fun to get like a personal stake in the battle, which unfortunately is kind of what we're missing in like Key Ryujir at the moment, you know, and, and a lot of others. I mean, but like Geki Ranger, definitely a rivalry there with Ryo and Jan and, and their whole past and the father and, situation and all you know, that. Samurai has the whole thing going with Decker. Was there something like that in Shinkanger? Yeah, it was pretty, again, it's copy and paste. It was pretty much the same thing, but just like, um, I need to fight the greatest warrior who ever lived, and that's Shinkanger. So I Red. have a rivalry with the Red Ranger. Yeah. I care less about accomplishing the evil deeds of the guy I'm working for. Yeah. I'm more interested in fighting this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, one last thing, this harkens back to the Mechas. Maybe mix it up on whatever mechas we receive. You know, they already said that there's not going to be a lion. Mm -hmm. So let's just, I mean, the Red Ranger has to have some kind of triumphant animal. So I say give him the weirdest animal possible. Give him a giant snail or something. A snail <laughs> or, you know, give him a bear. Hey, bears are awesome. I want to see pandas. That's what I want to say. I want to see more pandas. Give that to a black ranger or a white ranger. <laughs> oh, but, well, red panda. Think about it. But red pandas aren't that... Yeah, but still. It's red. <laughs> yeah. The... So, different animals. Stuff we haven't seen a lot of. I'd really hope that we don't get another shark for blue. Yeah, and if it's a shark, at least make it like a hammerhead. Or, you know, make it like an orca. Which they did. <laughs> yeah, but... but that got changed when it came stateside. Oh, yes, yes. So, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to see it mixed up with animals. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I'm uh, I'm understanding here is a lot of the elements that does make Sentai work. It is the interpersonal conflicts with the Rangers uh, from a lot of the seasons, um, animal uh, Zord variations, basically uh, different arms, different legs, and all that, which can get tiresome. Weapons, but, but 
Yeah, um, yeah. Weapons are are signature weapons because it's one thing when all your rangers use a sword in combat like samurai, but it's much better when the pink ranger is an expert marksman with the bow. The black ranger is. And a, also, that they you know, need to be cool weapons and look like they'd be useful. Like it, I said, I dislike the hand, the weapons of the Kyo rangers. Yeah, the black ranger is probably the only good one there. Just because his is another gun, and he and can that, do a wield. The size on that one is justified, but, you know, that little tiny thing that yeah. the red and pink use. Definitely. Well, I mean, I definitely uh, understand where you come from here, and I would agree with a lot of these choices. Mine is a little bit different here, yeah, because hit me, hit me. here's the thing. I, I have thought long and hard of what I would do if I could make my own Power Rangers series. Okay. Now, the first thing I would do is... Um, in general, like I said, conflict between characters. My problem I have with a lot of the Sentais and Power Rangers is that they are a group chosen by a single person or government organization. They are destined to go ahead and be part of this team. Yeah, destined to save the world. Exactly. But the thing about Jetman that I like the most... They, it half was, the Jetmen were accidental. It was random. I want to see a Sentai... And this may just be exactly like Jetman, but I want to see it again. Where all five of the Rangers, none of them belong there Maybe at all. Maybe one that belongs. No, none of them. I, okay. I, I like okay. the idea that nobody's associated with it. This just falls out of the sky, essentially, and they get thrown into a situation in which they have to adapt to it. Have to learn to work together yeah, with a bunch of strangers. Yeah, because even the Red Ranger and Jetman, you know, he uh, he knew what he was do doing, what he was getting into. He understood the threat, and he was the, the consummate leader. But if, you, if the leader of the team is some, like, store clerk that I shouldn't be here today... Um, but I'm new in town. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like, again, you randomly get this and then you have to deal with it. That's what, what I what I like is that you, it just suddenly comes out of nowhere. You have to go ahead and deal with it. Um, Learn to adapt. Okay, and, I like and it that. Just, and even if it's like, like, say the Black Ranger, which I, okay, say one of the Rangers is a criminal or something, you know, he should be in jail. <laughs> yeah, but... Way to, way to walk out of that, potentially. <laughs> I am sorry. My apologies. I didn't think about it. But, you know, always the Black Ranger is always like the antagonist, the foil for the Red Ranger. Yeah, and all that. yeah. But my point is, like, he's like a criminal or something, but then he becomes a hero because of this situation. The anti-hero, basically. Exactly. You know, stuff like that. That's why I kind of want to see with so, the Rangers. Sort of like Ziggy and Dylan. And um, I know, I know you dislike RPM. But a little bit rougher would be the way I say it. You know, a little, a little bit rougher than, than so either like, of those characters. like Ziggy, but actually rough and serious. Yeah, kind of, more like Dylan, I guess, but less Wolverine in his character. Yeah, yeah. So basically mix the two. Ziggy's criminal background with Dylan's gruffness. That, that's a simplification of it, but yeah, I, I will go with that just for simplicity purposes here. Because if I had the chance to develop it a little bit more, I would tell you kind of how I want to go ahead and do that. Um... As far as, like, the mechas are concerned, it, I like the animals, but why don't we get triple Transformers again? Okay, like in GoBusters with, with Let, GoBuster Ace. Yeah, let's say, uh, okay, so let's go off an owl, and let's say it goes to the Yellow Ranger and stuff. So we're doing a Yellow Owl. It's a Bird 1 form. So and plane. It, well, it doesn't even have to be playing. Uh, you know, if, if, I'm just saying, look, pure animal. So it's an owl bird, and then it becomes a robot, okay, humanoid robot like Garuda, from Mystic Force, and then it could become, uh, it could be a jet, it could be a different type of vehicle and all that, because I just like multiple forms of the same robot. And this goes back to my, uh, another thing that I had said, I forget which video we had said it in before, but I like, oh, it was in a, a Zord video that we had done. Okay. Um, each ranger has their own Megazord, basically. So uh -huh. you have auxiliary zords that come in throughout the season, and they can be armor for each different zord. So we get five core zords. Each of them is animal, turns into vehicle, turns into robot. Mm -hmm. Then we have, say, a water-based um, uh, auxiliary set, three to five auxiliary pieces. They'll combine with the pink rangers and make the Megazord. Yes. But then they can go to the Black Rangers and turn into the Megazord. 
and then all five of the Ranger Zords, uh, Prime Zords will come, make a large Megazord, like maybe Super Train size. Yeah, and then yeah. all these other auxiliaries, like each Ranger has their own set of standardized auxiliary, which they can share with the others. And then okay, the auxiliaries, yeah. everything just makes a giant Megazord. Because this gets into my collectible thing. I don't mind collectibles as long as there is a set number. And by that, I mean, look at the Ranger Keys. First, it was like 200 of them. But then you have all these extras. You have the, the shiny ones. You have the um, special Christmas key. Yeah, and, go okay, Christmas. So yeah, go it's it just there's no <laughs> set number. But if you look at Go Onger, each one had the soul chips. Yeah, and there's only 12. Here we are. How many batteries are there in total? There are going to be like 24 in total, like 23, yeah, so 24. That's set number. Yeah, but then they have all the extra batteries, and then they have the dark batteries, then they have the see-through batteries, and all these different variations on them, but I would like a set number of collectibles. Set numbers so they can be special. Yeah, and, and I don't see how mine would have, my idea would have the collectible kind of stuff in there, but uh, like even the if the Zords themselves are collectibles, if the auxiliaries are collectibles, like Kiryuj or Nell, you know, where you have to buy each one in a set, I think that would be fine. Okay. And I think the last thing I would do, and these are just broad strokes, because if we could sit down and do an entire series, I think oh, we would come up with be, something. That would be a long podcast. Yes. But the last thing I would like to see is, first of all, the, it's the villains. First, I would like human villains. I think the human villains are always the best. You I, get, I agree. You I get, agree. Because, again, Geki Ranger, my favorite villains thus far of the ones I've seen. Uh, I love Inter, and now I've just been introduced to Escape since I'm finishing uh, Go Buster. And then you, got and, you know, go back to Bosco and go Bosco, back. yes, because he was very interesting. Because they, you can connect with them more emotionally. And see, that's something that Power Rangers has been failing on for the last few years. But here's where I would change the formula completely and try something new. Have the antagonists be a dark team of Power Rangers. Okay. Now, yeah. not, not like the Psycho Rangers, but what I'm saying is they are another team of Power Rangers who maybe they're working for somebody like Messiah or something like that. Like they're evil Zordon, basically. So kind of like the A-Squad Rangers? And no, team? not like that. So so imagine, did you ever read Animorphs? Yes. Do you remember the Elemis and the uh, Krayak? Okay, yeah. So you have the good Zordon, the evil Zordon. They have their own have their team. champions. Yes. Exactly, and then they're fighting against each other for some galactic wars or whatever the thing is. And then what you can do is you have the five evil rangers with their own established backgrounds, their own established weapons. And see, uh, that, there's own five to six more toys right there. Th that Exactly, and then they have their own, not like some cheap-ass robot, but actual developed robots like they would, like they would normally mecha be. mecha that's threatening. Exactly, and they could be like, Sentai 38A, basically. Yeah, 38A, 38B, basically. Okay, so you have, so two, you have two Sentai teams. Let, me, let yeah. me present a question, though. Yeah. What is... How do you plan to utilize that for the week-to-week -week monster fights? Well, that would be a good question, because I haven't really thought about it that far. But I just think the idea is, like, maybe they get a new Zord every week. Maybe that's what it is. It's escalation. Is that they're just building up. Because, I, you know, I think I like GoBuster and what they did is that... It was very logical what they did with their villains and, and how they did the Megazords and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But ma Megazords. maybe, you know, or maybe each of these rangers have the ability to create different monsters. What some people don't understand about Ginga Man, uh, it, when it was translated to Lost Galaxies, you had five specific or four or five specific villains with each of their minions being a specific motif. Like the Villamax uh, equivalent, all his were like leather-based uh, swordsmen or something okay, like that. Okay, so it's similar to Baokinger and Operation Overdrive in that aspect. Something like that. So, like, say you got the evil Yellow Ranger, okay, and she is able to get her own army of minions or something like that, or she creates monsters, and all of her monsters are gun-wielding of some sort. So this week, you'll have the gun-wielding monster from the Yellow Ranger. She's leading him on the battlefield. Okay, yeah. And then it could be a giant monster or her own Megazord, where, you know, the monster's destroyed, then she takes him on the Megazord, and she has a new upgrade to go ahead and use. Again, it's just a pr uh, preliminary thought, but what, what I, the reason I bring this whole and the reason I went to this whole tangent is I want to see two Ranger teams go against each other the entire season. Okay, so that kind of goes into what I was saying with wanting a rivalry. Yeah, because each Ranger, and here's another thing I always thought, wouldn't it be cool if the villains in Power Rangers were always like 
clones of the rangers. So imagine somebody took the Red Ranger, cloned them, you have the Dark Red Ranger, same person, you can get the same actor, basically, and you can save money on that, but they have completely different ideas. I would argue against that. I would prefer the dark counterpart formula. Well, yeah, and again, you can do that. Just I'm just spitballing here and all that, but just whatever way you can get to have these five good champions against the five evil champions that are somehow polar opposites. And, you know, think about, like, uh, what I said about the... The criminal ranger, what if the other guy's like his cellmate, his rival is his cellmate, who made the choice, I'm going to go with evil, I'm not going to go ahead and do yeah, good. Yeah, I'm not going to attempt to yeah. be some kind of hero. Okay. Yeah, so one guy who seeks redemption, one guy's like, I don't care, I'm going to do what I have been doing because now I have more power, or whatever yeah. it is. Okay. I just think it would be so awesome to have two teams of rangers during the entire season and both have these great leaders uh, you know, and it goes against what I said about randomly getting the Rangers, but you never know how you can work. I would work that indifferent, I guess, in my show. But I want, I just want to be more toys, more character dynamics. I think it would just be a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that two teams of Rangers is great merchandising opportunity as well as, you know. And they've tried it before in previous Rangers. I mean, again, first we saw that kind of like Mega Ranger, uh, not Mega, yeah, Mega Ranger with uh, the, the Psychos. And, and then, then, well, didn't. Was it Die Ranger or Kaku Ranger that had the... The, the Lotus team or something. They all yeah. flat, the, the cats turn into to girls, but they're not really even a Sentai team. They even, I, I'm talking about like fully developed concepts and ideas. Yes, yes, yes. Because um, everybody's had like the Dark Rangers. So they're mirror opposites of the Rangers. But again, you got to yeah. have this whole team. You know, need that, to be worthy opponents, not those god-awful costumes. <laughs> some of them worked, some of them didn't. So... Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, I'm not about the Dark Rangers. I'm talking about like evil versions of the okay, Rangers and all okay. that. But same thing, yes. Sort of like if Lord Zed had spent more time on the Dark Rangers. And, you know? be, and if they were around longer instead of just being in and out. Because imagine if Zed came in the second season and his team of Rangers were the Die Rangers with the Thunder Zords. That would have been a cool. Exactly. So think of an entire series based on that concept of two teams of rangers with their own zords and two different leaders with two different agendas. And that's what a lot of fans were hoping would be done with the Power Rangers adaptation of Ghost Sager. A lot of fans had hoped that they would combine Ghost Sager and Mm Gokaiger and that there would be two different teams. You'd have the Ghost Sager team and the Gokai team. Although, the problem with that is you would really have to work hard to make sure that the the Ghost Sager team isn't overshadowed by the Gokai team because yeah. they're going to look cooler <laughs> yeah. with their ranger changes. Yeah. But, you know, Raptor, the thing is is that we, we don't know what's going to go ahead and be coming. We don't know if they're going to follow formula. We all know what Toei is going to say at the top levels, like we need this. If a lot of their stuff is based on marketing or if they just you know have some good writers are going to come up with some good stuff. It's going to be an interesting ride here, and I would hope that maybe one or two of our ideas will eventually come to fruition uh, somewhere down the line, whether that be the 38th, the 9th, 39th, or think about it in a few more years, the 40th, uh, Sentai, wow, yeah, yeah. which I'm curious on what they're going to do there. But, you know, I just want to kind of get those ideas out there. Maybe we'll do a podcast. We'll create our own Ranger team and share it with our fans. We'll see. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> but, you know, hey, um, we want to know what you guys think. You know, what, what do you, first of all, what do you think about the rumors that came out today? You know, let us yeah, know. Yeah, we'll put a link to the we'll put, Ranger board thread in the description. Yeah, we'll, we'll set that in there. And, you know, t- again, tell us what you think about. And also, what kind of Sentai do you guys want to see? Or, if you want, what kind of Power Rangers do you want to go ahead and see? The, you know, know give us your ideas give us your thoughts we want to go ahead and hear and you know maybe raptor and i can debate a couple of ideas next yeah, time yeah maybe we can do a response if we get some good res- yeah because you know Raptor, i'm always up for doing responses i just want to get a response that's not from a troll <laughs> <laughs> well let's see let's see you pretty much invited them by saying that yes I, yes i did so it's on you guys now <laughs> But I want to thank everybody for listening here. I want to thank Raptor uh, for joining Always me here. Always good to be here. Absolutely. So you guys uh, have yourself a, a good day, and the tavern is now closed.